Okay, so today is the 20th of May, no? Yeah. The 20th of May. And we're making the sketch of the first program of what we call Walk the Talk, Reggae for Water. And it should also incorporate uh, Walera's Water Weekly from the United States, from Charlotte, North Carolina, to show that there are similarities in water problems in Malawi and the United States. Obviously all over the world, but right now this is a bridge between Nchinji and Charlotte in North Carolina. So, um, here you are, Esther, with me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I guess in the first one, since it's me starting the, the program, I've become the journalist. <laughs> yeah, you'll be the journalist for today. For today? Yeah. So how much are you going to pay me for being a journalist for today? You're going to do a free service. You decide that? Yeah. How can you decide that I should do a free service? We are helping the community, you know. Okay. Yeah, it should be a free thing. Okay. At least you should enjoy the right of being a journalist just for a day. Okay, very yeah. good. You know that I led you into a trap. So from now on, <laughs> from now on whenever you ask for something, <laughs> I will tell you you're helping the what? The community. The community. It's on tape, okay? Yeah. Do you hear that, people? This is the evidence that Esther has said that she will forever work for Kaisa in for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work for the community. Okay, yeah. Kaisa in his community. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Esther. Um, first of all, I'm very happy that you're here to help me out with this to make my dream come true. Uh, the people at um, Mudziwa to know that I've been wanting to do things for a long time. And they even started doubting whether it was going to happen because it always come not committing or whatever. But now we've committed and we've paid the monies and we want to be paying on a weekly basis. So no matter where I go, people will know that Chios is interested in the community. You'll be hearing my radio every week, my, my voice on the radio every week. And I want to be hearing the voice of the people every week. So is it possible that you can have part of the program as a phone in so that the people of Muchinji can be phoning in to tell me the problems while I'm in America. I want to hear. Yeah, that's possible. Okay. Yeah, as long as there will be good network on that day, it will be fine. Day. Okay. Yeah. Is there a problem with network sometimes? Sometimes it does, you know. Is network a bad problem in Jinji? Yeah, sometimes. A lot. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So we need better network providers. Yeah. That we need in Jinji. So already that's a campaign. Let's write that down there. <laughs> better network for Yeah, Mchinji. better network for Mchinji. Yeah. Here we are solving Mchinji's problems. That's the... Yeah. That's the whole point with this program. We are here and we'll continue yeah. solving the problems of the Mchinji community. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So tell me a little about... Now that we're dealing with water and uh, food security in Malawi, um we cannot depend on the rains obviously yeah irrigation is an option we have a big lake why are we still starving why is there no irrigation why is there not enough water in the water boards why are people in Lilongwe be told that soon there'll be load shedding with water meaning that one day you will have water in Chiro not Chiromone, that's in Blanta, in area 25 and then water in area 23 yeah. will be cutting off. Why are we in that situation, my sis? What, what can we do about it? I think it's a matter of involving irrigation. Due to the climate change that we are currently facing, it's another challenge. We have climate change. Enough, yeah, we don't have enough rains throughout the year. And then I should say it reduces the water tables in, on the ground. Yes. So it becomes very difficult for the water board to supply water to the much needed people, you know, as the demand is it keeps on growing. So we are too many people in Malawi want for, for too few services? Yeah. Okay. And has and nothing has been done to anticipate the it, population growth. The service has not grown with the population. Yeah, the service has not grown to meet the demand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that has been a challenge. Okay. So that's just that but in, in seriousness that is a small issue. The issue that is more at hand is the food. Yeah. 
the food, food is, security. Yeah, food security is a problem right now. That like Malawi is facing. Malawi. Yeah. And not just us. Yeah. Zimbabwe too. South Africa also. Uh -huh. So irrigation is quite important. Yeah, very. Have you witnessed any irrigation happening around in, in Chinji? So far, I haven't been to any irrigation scheme in Chinji, but I've heard so many like okay. saying we have uh, an irrigation scheme here mm. and there, but not much. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the other day when talking, you talked a little about when projects come, because we've had many development projects, why are they failing? Because obviously we still have poverty. I feel most of the time it's just a paperwork thing. They don't yeah. go to the community and do the actual thing. Mm -hmm. They just say, we're going to do this, or we have done this, or we have done this. They've never been in the remote areas and perform the thing. They just say, we've done this. You know? And you dare to say that on radio? Are you not afraid of your life? No! That's the problem that the community are facing. Okay. So the community is facing a lot. You know, the organizations that come, just come and say, we are bringing you this. They bring things that are not reliable to the community. Okay. You see? They come in and, and build a boho that will just run for two or three months, you know, and then it goes off. But can we say that that NGO has helped the community? No, no. and mm -hmm. it will not mm -hmm. help the community. So mm -hmm. I think, I feel organizations they're just doing a paperwork here in Mchinji or in Malawi at large. So presenting paperwork to the outside world? Yeah. And a few pictures See? to continue the, the, the contribution from outside, whereas it's not being... So why are the people not revolting or being... Why are they not protesting about this? Because everybody can work out that the help is not coming through. We Malawians we feel like if I do this, that means another organization will not come in and help us, you know. They fear the government, you know. Fear fear. The, yeah, it's, it's just a matter of being afraid of doing something. They feel like we should do this, but they cannot continue doing it because they fear somebody. Mm. Somebody in front of them, if we're going to do this, that means Mr. So so, -so brought this mm. to our community with this NGO. Yes. If you're going to do this, we're going to lay the relationship down. Yes. between him and the organization yeah yeah that's yeah. the problem mm. okay so we hear that from there and for people in america and england and uk are listening thank you very much for your help and for listening to the people who say they want to help africa as such but whether it is from our governments or whether it is organizations that have been there for a long time uh, they've been working for 30 years, 40 years, maybe even 50 years, but we still have poverty and we still have communities that are afraid of speaking out if those services are not up to scratch. Um, and we also have a situation where um, whoever is coming with a solution has already done the thinking for the people. In other words, um, we the people out here are incapable of thinking we need educated people to think for us. No, it's not about that. <laughs> it's not about that. It's not that we don't think. We are, uh, not, we are not good thinkers. We think. You know, I cannot come to you and give you a shirt. Yeah. Have I asked you that you need a shirt? Mm. No, I should come to you and say, Dean, what is it that you want? You know? So that is disrespectful to, to think that you know the solution for yeah. people before you've spoken to At people. At least go to them and talk to them. What is it that you need? Yes. You, know, you cannot go to the community and give them what they don't want. Mm. That means they will not make use of it and they will not take care of it. Yeah. But give them what they need. Mm. Ask them, consult them first mm. and say, what is it that you want? What is it that you want us to do for you? Yes. And then, in the process of doing the thing, mm. make sure that you involve the community. Also, they should take part in no way. It is coming from how okay. it has started okay. and then up to the end. So you find the process is not good enough? Yeah, because okay. you just go to the community and then we're going to do this. They'll bring in the workers from where they want and then put them in the community and then they will do the thing. After that, they will Malawian go. workers? Yeah, Malawian workers, they, they, they so hire contractors. So strange workers from yeah. elsewhere coming in? Okay. Coming into the communities and mm. they do the work for them. After all the processes, they will just hand it over to the community. Mm. But I feel they should involve them. At mm. least one of the two, one or two, three community members, they should mm. be involved in the process. So mm. that after it has been 
damaged or it has something has happened to it, they should be able to know that we are going to maintain this in this way or yes. in that way. Okay. Yeah. So there is lack of ownership, lack of involvement in the process, yes, and lack of follow up, which means that lack of maintenance of of any process, any uh, progress. Yeah, and then sometimes you find that organizations that have gone to the community in a, a boho, something, a, a building or a, a school, they don't go and follow the resources that have run out in the structures yeah. you know, for the school. They don't follow. They just donate the thing and then say, okay, the communities are going to continue from their own. Forgetting that the communities need support. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that in terms of food security, 